Brooklyn Independent Television. Welcome to Brooklyn Review. I'm Brian Vines. For more than a decade, religious groups have been fighting in the courts to continue holding worship services inside New York City public school buildings. February 12th was the last day that organizations were allowed to do so, but their battle is not over. This month, the New York State Senate passed a bill that would allow these institutions to continue in public schools, but the future of that legislation remains in question. Sherry Carabin recently spent the morning with members of a Presbyterian church in Park Slope to see how they are being affected. Members of Park Slope Presbyterian Church bid a final goodbye to John Jay High School, the place they've held their Sunday worship services since they began. We started worship in March of 2004. It's been a good stay. But their days at the high school came to an end in February. This after Houses of Worship lost a long court battle last year in which they were fighting for the right to continue to use New York City Department of Education buildings to hold religious services. The move is more than a little disappointing to Garland Harwood. He's been coming to the church from day one. We're just very disappointed that um, we're not going to be able to meet here anymore because we don't really see who's winning with this situation. We were paying our rent and um, the school was able to use those funds for great purposes. Um, we pay the same rent as non-religious organizations and we don't understand why we're being targeted over you know, other organizations that aren't being targeted and still have the freedom to meet here. Although the Department of Education gave institutions until February 12th to change venues, members of Park Slope Presbyterian Church held their last morning service on February 5th. It's been a good school for us to rent. You can see that it's been very good for our congregation. We started with very few people and we've grown into quite a large congregation and helped start two other congregations in Brooklyn. Um, and our relationship here at John Jay has always been very good, very cordial. And, uh, and so we're disappointed to have to leave. At the same time, it's a new chapter in our church's life and we're going to move to another building here in the neighborhood with, uh, in, a, in a church building that uh, we have great relationships with. The new location is nearby Greenwood Baptist Church. But there is one catch, however. Members will have to get used to a new 4 p.m. start time. I wouldn't be surprised if we, if we have a few people that can't make it. And also, you know, we have a few dedicated members that have to work on Sunday evenings. So, you know, as long as we're meeting in the afternoon, they, they can't attend the church. Our um, congregation here is pretty committed to the church. So I think everybody will make do their best to be there. Ethan Campbell and his wife say they don't plan to change churches. They've also been attending services from the beginning. In terms of where the church actually meets, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be the same church, you know, no matter where we go. But it is too bad to, to lose that connection with the, with the school, with John Jay. The time change for us so far is okay because he, Jonah does take an early afternoon nap. So hopefully he'll be <laughs> awake um, by the 4 p.m. service. So it should be okay. We'll see. While the issue made a lot of headlines in 2011 and 2012, it actually dates back to 1995 when the Bronx Household of Faith first filed a lawsuit seeking to hold its worship services in a public school. In June 2002, the U.S. District Court issued a preliminary injunction requiring the Department of Education to allow this institution and other religious organizations to hold worship services in the city's schools during non-school hours. A series of appeals and court cases followed, but in June 2011, the Second Circuit ruled in favor of the city, and last December, the U.S. Supreme Court decided not to reconsider this decision, leaving houses of worship to find alternative locations for their services. I don't think it's fair. I grew up in New York City. I grew up going to public schools for most of my life. Um, I think schools are part of the community, just like churches are part of the community. Um, I think uh, we are very conscious of not leaving any trace 
of our church behind to keep things separate. Those at the Department of Education say they have several concerns. They don't want to associate any public school with a particular religious belief or practice. In addition, they say government money should not be used to subsidize worship services and that the schools are not equally available to all faiths, meaning there's a perceived favoritism. But opponents aren't buying these arguments. I'm also disappointed and a little confused by the Board of Ed's decision because they rent church buildings all over the city. They rent church buildings here in our neighborhood uh, from the diocese. If you go down to 4th Avenue and 8th Street, PS 133 is in a building that is owned by the Catholic Diocese, and on every peak of that building are crosses and there are, as far as uh, who knows, but there are probably some religious symbols within that building as well. The New York City Housing Authority recently reversed its stance toward houses of worship, allowing them to continue to hold services in public housing. Members of this church say the Department of Education should do the same. One of the things about the Board of Ed's decision is that they're overlooking the fact that churches like ours, uh, without proselytizing students in these schools, have very good relationships with these schools. Um, when businesses would not, in the neighborhood would not buy a new scoreboard for the school, they came to us and after one Sunday's collection we bought the gym a new scoreboard here. We've reorganized the library on the weekends, we've painted hallways, we've painted classrooms. In the meantime, the battle continues with the state Senate passing a bill that would allow religious institutions to continue to use public schools for their worship services. While the legislation has yet to pass, it does give members of this church hope for the future. It doesn't look like it's going to be in the near term um, future that this will change dramatically, but um, again, one can always hope that there could be a better dialogue between all these groups, churches included, and the Board of Ed. Reporting from Park Slope, this is Sherry Carabin for Brooklyn Review. Download this program's podcast on iTunes, keywords Brooklyn Independent Television.